March 2, 1998. A day like any other in Vienna, Austria. Children, backpacks slung over shoulders, made their way to school. Among them was 10-year-old Natasha Kampusch, her bright smile a testament to childhood innocence. Little did anyone know this ordinary day would soon transform into an unspeakable nightmare. As Natasha walked alone, a white van pulled up. The driver, Wolfgang Priklopil, grabbed her, pulling her into the vehicle. Natasha vanished, swallowed by the unknown. News of Natasha's disappearance spread like wildfire, engulfing Vienna in fear and despair. Parents clutched their children closer, the city holding its breath. The police launched a massive investigation, but every lead turned into a dead end. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into years. Hope dwindled, replaced by the agonizing silence of uncertainty. The case of Natasha Kampusch became Austria's most infamous missing person case, a chilling reminder of the darkness that could lurk in broad daylight. Unbeknownst to the outside world, Natasha was trapped in a living nightmare. Priklopil had imprisoned her in a meticulously crafted soundproof dungeon beneath his garage. This tiny, windowless space, just five square meters, became her world, a chilling testament to Priklopil's meticulous planning and the depths of his depravity. The first few months were the hardest. Natasha was kept in complete darkness, chained to a bed, her only companion the deafening silence of her underground prison. Priklopil, a seemingly ordinary communications technician, had meticulously planned and executed Natasha's abduction. He controlled every aspect of her life, her food, her clothes, her every waking moment. He presented himself as her master, her savior, attempting to warp her reality and crush her spirit. Despite the horrors inflicted upon her, Natasha clung to life. She found solace in her thoughts, in the faintest glimmers of light that occasionally pierced the darkness. She refused to let the darkness consume her. Priklopil was a study in contradictions. Outwardly unremarkable, he blended seamlessly into society. Inwardly, he harbored a storm of twisted desires and a desperate need for control. He yearned for power, for the ability to manipulate and dominate another human being. He saw Natasha not as a child, but as an object, a possession to mold to his will. Priklopil's behavior was a complex mix of cruelty and calculated manipulation. He subjected Natasha to physical and emotional abuse, starving her, beating her, and subjecting her to relentless psychological torture. Yet he also showered her with gifts, books, and even a television, attempting to create a warped sense of normalcy within the confines of her prison. He sought to control not just her body, but her mind, to make her dependent, to make her believe that he was all she had. As the years turned into an agonizing eternity, Natasha developed coping mechanisms to survive her ordeal. She learned to read Priklopil's moods, anticipating his outbursts and trying to avoid his wrath. She clung to scraps of knowledge, devouring books and radio broadcasts, her thirst for learning becoming a lifeline to the outside world. Priklopil, in a perverse attempt to control her even further, began allowing Natasha brief periods outside her dungeon. He took her on outings, always under his watchful eye, a constant reminder of her captivity. He forced her to cook and clean for him, treating her like a servant, further blurring the lines between captor and captive. Despite the constant threat of violence and the psychological manipulation, Natasha never gave up hope. She knew that her survival depended on her resilience, on her ability to compartmentalize the horrors she faced and cling to the belief that one day she would be free. As Natasha grew older, Priklopil's control over her began to waver, albeit slightly. He allowed her more freedom, trusting her with small tasks outside the confines of her dungeon. He even allowed her to work in his garden, a small taste of the freedom she craved. These moments, though fleeting, fueled Natasha's hope. She began to observe Priklopil more closely, studying his routines, searching for any weaknesses she could exploit. She knew that escape would be perilous, but the yearning for freedom burned brighter than ever. Each day she meticulously planned, waiting for the opportune moment. On August 23rd, 2006, after eight long years of captivity, fate intervened. Priklopil, distracted by a phone call, left Natasha unattended while she was vacuuming his car. Seizing the moment, she made her daring escape. She ran with all her might, her heart pounding in her chest, fear lending speed to her feet, 
she found a neighbor who, recognizing her from missing person posters, alerted the authorities. The news of Natasha's escape sent shockwaves across Austria and beyond. The world watched in disbelief and awe as the young woman, her face etched with the weight of her ordeal, emerged from the shadows. Emerging from the darkness of her captivity, Natasha was met with a mixture of relief and overwhelming media attention. The world was eager to hear her story, to understand how she had endured the unimaginable. Yet, freedom brought its own set of challenges. The transition from captive to survivor was fraught with emotional turmoil. Natasha struggled to adapt to a world that had moved on while she remained frozen in time. The trauma of her ordeal manifested in anxiety, panic attacks, and a profound sense of displacement. She faced public scrutiny, with some questioning her story, doubting her experiences. The media, hungry for every detail, often disregarded her privacy, re-traumatizing her with their relentless pursuit. The world listened with bated breath as Natasha, in her own words, recounted the horrors she had endured. Her story, a chilling testament to the resilience of the human spirit, captivated and horrified in equal measure. People struggled to comprehend the depths of Priclopil's depravity and the strength it took for Natasha to survive. Her escape sparked a wave of public debate about child abduction, captivity, and the often hidden horrors that can lurk beneath the surface of ordinary life. Law enforcement faced intense scrutiny, their failure to uncover Natasha's whereabouts for eight years, raising uncomfortable questions about investigative procedures and the challenges of tackling such complex crimes. Despite the profound psychological scars of her ordeal, Natasha refused to be defined by her past. She chose to reclaim her narrative, to use her experience to advocate for others. She established a foundation in her name dedicated to supporting victims of violence and promoting child protection. She wrote a book, 3,096 Days, detailing her captivity and her extraordinary journey to reclaim her life. Her story, translated into multiple languages, became an international bestseller, touching the hearts of millions worldwide. Natasha's courage, her refusal to be broken, inspired countless others who had faced their own personal darkness. She became a symbol of hope, a testament to the unyielding strength of the human spirit. Natasha's case, while extreme, shed light on the often hidden realities of child abduction and captivity. It forced society to confront the psychological complexities of these crimes, the motivations of the perpetrators, and the long-lasting impact on the victims. Experts analyzed Priclopil's actions, attempting to unravel the mind of a man who could inflict such cruelty. They explored the concepts of Stockholm Syndrome, the psychological phenomenon where hostages develop empathy for their captors, and the long-term effects of trauma on child development. Natasha's case underscored the importance of early intervention, the need for specialized support systems for victims, and the ongoing challenges of reintegration into society after prolonged trauma. In the aftermath of Natasha's escape, Austria and the world grappled with the implications of her case. Law enforcement agencies reviewed their protocols, seeking ways to improve responses to child abductions and to prevent similar tragedies. The case highlighted the need for greater public awareness, for educating children about the dangers of strangers, and for fostering a culture of vigilance within communities. Natasha's story served as a stark reminder that even in seemingly safe and civilized societies, darkness can lurk beneath the surface. It challenged societal perceptions of normalcy, forcing people to confront the uncomfortable reality that monsters don't always lurk in the shadows, sometimes they hide in plain sight. <laughs>